Hello guys and welcome back. So this is the result using a higher uh, angle for the, to break the pin constraint, which is giving us a more bendy structure and something that holds up uh, a lot more than the previous one, which is this guy. So you can see here, it's as soon as it bends a bit, we're getting this nice fracture, which I really like. But I also like to be able to get this bending on the side. You know, I, I like this stuff. And the only bits that I don't like is when the constraint are, constraints are too stretched, like this. The, there is still pin constraint there, but it's not broken yet. So what we want to do is we want to add a, um, a condition. If the constraint got too stretched, we want to delete that. We want to break it. We don't want to break only by based on the angle. We want to break based on the distance as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, we can use same like we did with the transform here okay transforming the RBD we can transform the constraints and I'm gonna transform just the pin constraint and you can see now these are my pin constraints at this frame and then we transform them and look at how the primitives are getting stretched and I want to use this condition to compute the uh, uh, to compute the measure 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 these primitives and based on that we deform them. Okay, we did this transformation already in the stop solver inside DOPS. So I'm gonna reuse that code again, and um, and then we're gonna compute we're gonna measure the distance, and then based on that we're going to break the constraints. Now let's take a look at this guy, and I'm gonna copy this. Okay, and let's go up. So here is my constraint. I'm gonna connect the glue constraint, uh, the pin constraint, and then here is the second input, and we expect the packed primitives, and that is the original, the original geometry transformed, and this is going to give us the data with the pack full. Uh, it's basically what's inside DOPS. Okay. And then let's connect that here. And now we have the transformation going. And we're really doing all of this. And remember, we're doing this uh, this logic to pin to scale the primitives down. I don't want to do this uh, only. I want to compute something else. So I'm going to move this guy. I don't need the center. I'm going to move this block out. I left it inside the if because I didn't want to execute that unless I need it, unless this condition is true. So that's why I put it inside. But I want to compute something else. If we take, let me create a primitive quickly, a line. If we take this line and uh, create a wrangle node and uh, let's create a vector position one let me pause this player position one equal pause one is equal point zero and I want to import P the position and the point number is zero I want to import the position of point zero okay so we have a zero and one and I want to import point number one and the ID is one and now we want to compute the length. The way we do that is by subtracting the the positions from each other. So length F at length. We're gonna sub subtract pause zero minus pause one and then that's gonna give us a vector and we need the magnitude of that vector. Okay, so we're gonna compute the length of that and let's call this uh, yeah let's call it length that's fine and minus pause one now if we take a look we should see a length of one let me pin this and if we change this guy you can see it's matching and this is what we want to do we we want to compute the length when we are doing this code Okay, so 
and I want this to be yeah we'll do it as a point attribute so I'm gonna say this guy and I'm gonna set the I'm gonna create a new attribute called length And if it doesn't exist, I, I think it works, but we'll we'll take we'll check in a second. So this length, uh, I'm not gonna expose that. It's a float. And set point attribute for point zero and point one. So now we have a point attribute. The length. It's only. Oh, sorry. The, these guys don't exist, so we need to replace them. Okay, so we have that, and let's take a look. And we can copy this code and run it on the line to make sure that it's adding the length attribute. Yep. So we have it's working. We don't need to create the attribute beforehand. This expression sets it for us. So now we have the length attribute on these guys. And what I'm going to do, I don't need to merge that. Okay, so what I need to do here is I'm gonna use a color node. And we're gonna generate a ramp from attribute and the attribute is length and my let's take a look at the length value so it goes between 0 and 50 52 so let's say anything that is bigger than 2 is going to be black and then up to anything that is 4 or higher okay as long as it didn't reach 2 it's going to be black once it becomes uh, higher than two we're gonna flag it it's gonna become white okay so this is my condition and i'm gonna use that inside this uh, oh, we can actually create a primitive attribute yeah i like to create a primitive attribute with this so let's try primitive attribute uh, f length prim is equal to length and let's see how that how that looks uh, the reason for that for that is because this I want to put everything inside this if uh, inside this wrangle and it's a primitive attribute so let's set this to prim ram from attrib and length prim two and four and delete attribute yep so we're going to use just the prim i'm going to remove these guys and let's call this length it's fine or you know what let's do just do one line here and save save us some time okay and then if that length is higher than two we're gonna set the constraint name here i can put both conditions inside the same line but I prefer to keep it clean so if length is higher than 2 constraint name is equal to pin broken and let's copy these three guys let's paste them here and this is my new code this is the same and this is new okay and let's go to the first frame I don't know why okay cool so let's uh, I'm gonna cache this again as v4 And let's keep the same name here. So V4, I'm gonna cache 140 frames and I will do a preview. I'll let it cache now. Just make sure that we're looking at the right output, yep. 
So I'm going to cache this and we'll continue in the next video. And one thing before I stop here, I wanted to show the sim time for the V1. So I started off at 4.16 here, the first frame, and it took eight minutes to compute that, which is really, really fast. So I'm pretty happy with the sim time and the overall look. And let's take, uh, let's see how this new one is going to be in the next video. And remember, we're still using that high uh, angle, which is not great, but I think let's see what's going to happen with all of this now added. Thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit.